Good afternoon. My name is Jason Ng, and I'm a freshman from Hilliard Davidson High School. My topic will be supporting arts education in schools. Again, I'd like to dedicate this speech to my mother, who's sitting out in the audience today. My mother was born and raised in Vietnam, attending school in urban Saigon until she was 15 years old. She describes the curriculum as consisting of four core classes, one math, two Vietnamese, three citizenship, and four social studies. What struck me most was that then, they never offered any art or music classes, though she wishes they did. She grew up with 10 siblings, owning practically nothing, and she felt intimidated by her school's bullies. Life was tough. This is why I feel showered with blessings every day when I play cello in the orchestra, hang up my drawings, sing in choir, and act in plays. Our Davidson Chamber Orchestra just traveled to Kansas City last week, and we took home third place in the National Orchestra Festival. And last month, I performed in Stage Door, our freshman sophomore play. Art is an outlet. Nothing can compare to that feeling of creating something, anything with your peers, whether it is a play or a symphony. The arts truly are a gem of Hilliard education. So how can so many schools be willing to sacrifice this? Generally, I view arts education as having two opposing factors. One, financial troubles, and two, our desire to improve other, more important areas of our education. So how can we reconcile these issues with the need for the arts, using the four-way test? To begin, let us ask, is it the truth? Is arts education truly necessary? Does it truly help other areas of academic performance? I answer yes to all of these. It's quite ironic how we oftentimes consider the arts as irrelevant to math, science, social studies and language. Some believe arts education distracts students from these more important <laughs> subjects. When in reality, art teaches us to understand and accept these concepts in creative ways, acknowledging that learning is an open-ended process, not just recalling answers. Additionally, numerous studies verify that young artists are actually more proficient in their education. For example, 12th graders in California who are highly involved with the arts, consistently scored 8% higher than their less involved counterparts on their state's standardized math and verbal tests. This is significant when you consider that many students of a lower socioeconomic status, yet higher involvement, consistently outscored their richer but less involved peers. And moving on to the second component, is it fair to all concerned? Absolutely. As mentioned before, art enhances students' education and academic performance. Also, art does not discriminate. It opens doors to students of all ages, ethnicities, and social classes. And it develops skills required in all professions, be it architecture or film direction. I also understand that the economy has taken a, a rough path to recovery, and some view the arts as trivial or recreational activity. <laughs> believing it provides them nothing but more taxes. But when levies are denied, oftentimes the first to be cut are arts programs, and the first to be laid off are arts educators. This could not be less fair, because we bring our communities together through artistic events, plays, concerts, gallery hops. The spirit of the arts is vital to our society. Now, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Well, a large-scale research project led by the U.S. Department of Justice experimented on young adults deemed at risk or suspect delinquent behavior. The program offered art opportunities to the experimental group, including everything from drumming classes to mural paintings. They then experienced a decreased number of court referrals and criminal activity compared to control. Similar projects prove that greater participation in the arts leads to greater participation in math and science fairs, writing competitions, and school in general. By taking adolescents off of the streets to create and express, we build goodwill. And oftentimes, these art experiences present more opportunities to interact with others and prospects of creating amazing things together. For instance, every year, my middle school orchestra would perform at senior citizen centers we not only cultivated stronger friendships as music flowed from our unison bow strokes, 
but we built stronger friendships with our audiences, and we met elderly people whom we would otherwise not approach. To answer the question, an education rich in the arts does build goodwill and better friendship. And the last criterion, will it be beneficial to all concerned? The student who creates art begins a life of passion. He or she learns values such as originality, open-mindedness, critical thinking, creative problem solving, confidence, and primarily, the ability to express without words. And the community benefits from the sense of unique style and culture that arts education sparks. We must acknowledge the fact that arts programs simply do not exist in many schools across the nation. And should we neglect the privileges we have to maintain them, our schools may become one of them. I believe that every human is born an innate artist. However, I fear that if this aspect of our cultures, of our nature, is not reinforced in early in life, especially in elementary school, some may never develop their artistic skill. And by that, I am implying that art is a life skill as it applies to our everyday lives and professions. Quote Gilbert Keith Chesterton, education is simply the soul of a society as it passes from one generation to another. So if we wish for the arts to flourish in our future generations, we must hold the doors of its education wide open for the eager minds of tomorrow. Thank you.